I was sent this scooter light, an electric scooter light by Jan from Germany. I think that's correct, Jan. It could be Jan, but I think it's Jan it's pronounced in Germany. And he'd bought one of those e-scooters that are used to sort of rent a scooter things in cities, but he decided to buy one. I think it was a used one. And one of the first things that kind of broke in it was the rear light. And it cost about €30 Euros to replace this. That's about £30. It's the best part of about, say, $40, American dollars. And he opened it up, took a look inside. And it's quite complex. Let me open this up. So all it does, it's just a red light, nothing else. And it's not polarity sensitive. There's a bridge rectifier. So inside is this little circuit board. I shall turn it off so it's not too glary. And I shall zoom up in it. But not too much, because you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a picture of this and we can take a closer look. So uh, it's a little circuit board and it's got a chip in it, a little inductor, so that's a, a switching circuit. And then there's quite an extra bit of circuitry, like two transistors here and the LED itself. The cable is actually chaffed about three inches, four inches, say 100 millimetres from where it comes out the back of the light. And it's chaffed through to the copper. I wonder if that was rubbing against the frame in any way. But we shall take this apart. So this uh, red bit here is purely a reflector, a retro reflector, and the only bit that lights up is this, and it just seems to be static. Right, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a picture of this, and we shall explore it. I'll find out what these components are, and then we'll see what makes this tick. Here's a close-up of this circuit board. It's very interesting. It divides down into three sections. It has the incoming supply, which goes via this bridge rectifier, so it can be connected in either polarity, which is good, then to a smoothing capacitor, which is on the other side of the circuit board. That's that smoothing capacitor there. That then supplies power to a XL Semi XL 7005A, which is a it's a buck regulator, but it seems to be aimed at one of on the data sheet. It actually specifically says it's ideal for use with electric bikes for supplying power to the control systems. And this, although the device says that it's suitable for a voltage range of between 5 to 58 volts, the chip can actually handle up to 80 volts. And look, this, uh, I'm not sure, this uh, is a 100 volt electrolytic. I'm not sure what this capacitor is rated at. So maybe it could be pushed that bit further if, I wonder why they've specifically, maybe that's just what they've tested it up to because that's what their, their test lab power supply went up to. But we have the chip, and it's got an inductor associated with it and an output capacitor. It's got a bridge, a voltage divider, of a, which I'll show you in the schematic afterwards, to set a voltage reference. So you can program with these two resistors, you can program the output voltage to this capacitor from this uh, regulator. Then it goes through the LED, and then, rather oddly, it's got an extra current regulator beyond that, based on two NPN transistors, with a sense resistor. And that's more or less it. I'll let you take a look. It's not an easy one. I'm not going to show you the other side of, in this form of, like, a picture, uh, because it's, you know, it's not actually terribly easy to see. It's quite a, it's quite a busy little circuit board. But uh, we'll go over and I'll show you the schematic. And the schematic I'll divide into two steps as well. The incoming supply goes via the bridge rectifier, so it doesn't matter what polarity you connect, and it doesn't matter 5 to 58 volts, it'll pretty much accept anything. And they could just to put a diode there, but the fact they included, for a little extra cost, the bridge rectifier is good, because it means that you just don't need to worry about the, the polarity or anything like that. Uh, the cable that was used to cook it up actually feels a bit, it's rubbery PVC-ish cable, it feels like speaker cable, and it's marked like speaker cable. I suppose that's all it's needed. It's not very high current. So that uh, bridge rectifier goes to the capacitor on the back of the circuit board and provides uh, a fairly ripple-free supply to the buck regulator. They have added one more capacitor here. They've added another one in parallel with that. Presume because the ceramic capacitor is of a lower impedance and it's going to make the operation of that more stable. It suggests that the person kind of knew what they were, what they were doing when they designed it. It goes through the buck regulator, which reduces the voltage to approximately 4.43 volts. And then it goes to this current regulator. So here's the LED, and it drops about 2 volts. The transistor actually drops about 1.8 volts. So the LED and resistor are both dissipating about the same amount of power. And then the resistor is dropping about 0.6 volts. So what's actually happening here is, initially current will flow down through this resistor and it will start turning this transistor on. 
When this transistor turns on, current will flow through the LED, but it'll also flow through this resistor. And once the current is high enough through across that 12 ohm resistor, well, let's do the, let's work it out. What would the current be? Uh, I equals V over R. I'm expected to be about 0 0.6. 0 0.6 divided by the 12 ohms gives 50 milliamps, which coincidentally is exactly what's driving, what's actually running through that LED. So as soon as it reaches the 50 milliamps, the 0 0.6 volts uh, is across this resistor and this one turns on and it basically pulls the base of this transistor down to the point the current reduces below that. And they find an equilibrium point, which is that 50 milliamp flowing through the LED. The block here, I shall get this out of the way. Things worthy of note before I show you that. The LED has four connections. Four of them are connected to positive. I'm guessing they're the back substrate of the LED. And then the negative is that little bond wire inside. Uh, so that will be for heat sinking of the LED. The regulator itself, this is totally swamped out. Not anymore, it isn't. Uh, it's a bit spindly, the, the text here. It also looks very blocky for some reason. That's strange. Yes, it does look very blocky. Well, to tell you why it's blocky, that's because this is behind it. It's not blocky anymore. That was just weird. I thought that was a, a digital artifact. In a way, it was. This is the incoming supply. It says 2280 volts. In reality, they're saying 5 volts upwards. Maybe if the, once the voltage is so low that this can't actually do anything, maybe it just relies on the fact that the oh, current regulator will still keep the LED running at those low levels. But they show 33 microfarad, 100 volts. What is that capacitor? 47 microfarad, 100 volts. Uh, but also they've got that little uh, ceramic capacitor there too. I'll draw that on. There's no harm drawing that little extra capacitor on. Not sure what its value is. The pin, the chip has an enable pin. That's another oddity about this. They've been playing safe. If you look at this, there's an extra 10K resistor here next to the freewheel diode, which I, I'll actually show you what that's doing in a moment. That's that diode there. They've actually taken a 10K resistor and they've taken it to the zero volt rail, the ground here, 10K to pull pin four low and that enables the chip. If you leave it floating, it also enables the chip. If you take it high, about, about five volts or so, it turns the chip off, but they're just playing safe. They're not, they could have left that floating, but they've played safe and just decisively tied it to the zero volt rail via that resistor. So now this chip will start pulsing this inductor. This end will go positive and this end will be negative effectively. And current will start flowing through that inductor to this capacitor on the output, the little tantalum capacitor. And uh, initially the inductor will actually, because it's building a magnetic field in it, it will actually push back against that. It will effectively restrict the flow of current. So it goes on, current flows, tops the capacitor up a little bit, but then that turns off and then this end goes negative, uh, this end goes positive, and this uh, freewheel diode or flyback diode uh, allows the current allows a continuous current path through that. So it's not just uh, limiting the current flowing into that, but when it turns off, any magnetic field stored in that collapses and it puts a little bit more into that. It makes it very efficient. The chip measures the voltage across that capacitor via this uh, pair of resistors. And it just, by setting, by choosing the resistors to give it its feedback voltage that it's expecting, it's got an internal reference, you can set precisely the output voltage. This little capacitor here is just to make sure that's stable. It uh, provides a nice, solid, stable reference. I wonder why that capacitor isn't down to that end. Not really sure. Uh, and that basically, this switching circuit then provides that uh, nice, stable output voltage. So now, let's get that out of the way. Let's bring the circuit back in again, connect it up, and we shall measure the voltage across this. So I'm going to brighten this image up just a little bit. And we'll bring the meter in. And we shall turn it on. And I shall connect these wires just randomly in any order since it's got a bridge rectifier, so it doesn't really matter. And when I turn it on, the LED will light. It's a bright, bright red LED. Uh, let's bring the meter over. I'll just sit this across here. 
and we'll measure the output from the regulator. So let's put it 20 volts. So now I'm measuring the output from the regulator across the tantalum bead capacitor. And the voltage it's putting out is 4.44 volts. I wonder why they chose that. It's possible that they just decided they wanted a bit, a margin to drop, and then chose it because it let them use a 10K resistor and a uh, 3.9K resistor. So it's just nice, uh, nice round values that they've chosen because they're not that bothered about the final outgoing voltage because parts of that will be dropped across the LED and this is where I'm dazzled by the LED, but I'm just going to try. So this is uh, the positive and this is effectively the output pin in the LED. So we're getting about 2.06 volts across the LED. That's then being limited by this little transistor here, which is going to the end of that sense resistor. So the voltage being dropped across the transistor is 1.8 volts. And then, let's just double check, I think. No, actually, I know what I did. I thought the light dipped there because uh, I'd actually put the probe in front of it. 1.8 volts across the transistor. So 2 volts across the LED, uh, 1.8 volts across the resistor. That The resistor is the bit that gets the warmest on the circuit board, but it's not too bad. It's only about 100 milliwatts. And here's the little sense resistor. Negative one side, positive the other. It'll be around about 0.6 volts. 0.56 volts. 0.56, based on that voltage and the resistance of 12 ohms, we should be able to calculate accurately how much current is flowing through that if it is perfectly 12 ohms. I equals V, 0.6, divided by, oh no, but that was a point of, what was that? Let's get it more accurate. Let's get it to the nearest decimal point. 0.56. Let's say 0.56. Uh, 0.56 divided by the value of the resistor is 46.6 milliamps. So roughly, I think they've been aiming for a nice round 50 milliamps in this. And that's pretty much what they're getting. And as I turn the voltage up, and I'm turning the voltage up now, it will just remain the same. So that's up to 16 volts now. Some of you may hear a whistling noise. Apparently there's power supply whistles. I don't hear it. And if I turn it down the way, let's say I point at my finger so you can see the intensity when it drops. That's at 8 volts. Now it's suddenly dropping at 5 volts. Just over 5 volts. Uh, by on 5 volts, it suddenly drops off. So they're absolutely right about the voltage range it covers. Well, that's pretty good. So yeah, interesting design. I thought that was strangely complicated, but it looks like they've just been, they've designed it properly, if you will. They've been sensible about the design and just played safe with everything. So it does have that. It doesn't matter polarity. It doesn't matter the voltage. It's just going to make that little red LED light, no matter what the battery pack size is in the scooter. So that's pretty good. Interesting little circuit. Initially, I was perplexed because number of components, but it does break down solidly. As you know, here's the section that does the initial voltage regulation, uh, and then this is the current regulator that just ensures a nice constant current through that. So quite a nice design, really. It's not too bad at all. Maybe not worth 30 euros, but that's just probably because ultimately lots of middlemen have uh, added a little bit extra to the price, but a pretty good little light, pretty neat circuit.